What is the best Jack Wolf yet? The After Hours Jack. And I'm excited to say that we got some on the Neve Knife Co. site. Now, we didn't get a ton of them, and I know they're going to sell out pretty quickly because I do expect this to be the most popular Jack Wolf knife yet, but we do have some on the site, but I'll link other sites as well, you know, so if that they run out on that site, you can get them from the other ones. So definitely check those out if you're interested in getting one. There's a bunch of different versions, different flavors, different colors, as Jack Wolf always does. Now we're gonna talk about sharpening, cutting performance, and all that good stuff, so let's get into it. We have a deep, hollow ground, sheep's foot blade, super deep hollow grind, very, very thin behind the edge. And because of its thinness in this grind and the blade shape, this is a utility cutting beast. It's basically like having a glorified utility cutter in your pocket. Now, what's beautiful is the way the handle complements the blade. This is a, well, one, I always talk about how I like a, uh, a handle that goes from slimmer to thicker. And this is, you know, not, not like dramatic, but it does taper thicker. And that taper is so nice in the hand. And then you have this coffin shaped handle in the back that leaves no spot to really poke you. So it almost feels rounded in the back end of it. So when you have it in this grip, my goodness, is it comfortable when you turn it around and that, that this is what I mean about the blade and handle complementing each other. I could, you know, say, um, peel an apple, do some whittling, do utility cuts, slice straps, cut, you know, long distance cuts. Everything is going to be mega comfortable. The pinch grips are amazing. Everything is amazing with this handle and just the way you can manipulate it. You feel like you have maximum control. And then when you add this precision blade to it and this blade shape, it just, you know, it takes it over the top. This edge is perfectly flat or perfectly straight. So it allows you, especially with these ergonomics, to get very long distance cuts all the way out to the tippity tippity tip. But you know, it won't slip out of a cut or anything like that. And you know, it, it's the cutting performance is insane. Now the handle and you know, the knife overall, it's not a hard use knife, so it's not gonna be one you're gonna wanna bear down on like you would an outdoors knife. But as far as a, a light duty EDC knife, this thing is going to shine with the majority of things you're gonna throw at it. Getting into the materials, the handle is a titanium bolster lock with a full titanium backspacer and milled pocket clip. Now the blade is an S90V blade um, and S90V is a high carbide, high wear resistant steel. It's an absolute super steel. It's one of the best super steels you can get on a pocket knife and it does require diamonds to sharpen it. Now I do think mine came with a little bit of a burnt edge, which is not a big deal. A lot of knives do. So we did have to sharpen it up. Just to show you a quick, easy way how you can sharpen this knife, being such thin geometry, this thing's gonna sharpen up super fast. You're not gonna wanna put too low of an edge angle on it. You're gonna wanna stick close to what the factory edge is. You can drop it down a little bit, I am, but it's super thin, so it already has the cutting performance. It already has the geometry. Um, you, you don't want the edge to be too brittle, so you don't wanna put too low of an angle. Now, once you got your angle, the angle you want, Lock your wrist and then uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move my body. I'm not even gonna move my arms because this is a worn cliff, right? I can use my arms and just pull back my arms. That's usually how I do it because I'm used to it. But when you're not, a quick way to do it or a nice way to do it to where you're not gonna mess up is lock your wrist and now just lean back, lean forward. Lean back. Now you can just do single strokes too, which might, might be easier for you. But once you have it locked in, focus at the heel right here, at the heel of the blade. And then as you're coming across the stone, pull back and let the blade slide off of the stone like that up to the tip. You don't want to go like this back and forth because otherwise you might not hit the entire bevel and it might look wonky or there might be areas that aren't getting hit. So this, for me, I found to be the best way. So I'm gonna just lean back lift up i'm just lifting up my elbow and then setting it right back down so i'm staying locked with my wrist so no pressure with this finger or with this hand i'm literally just using it as almost like an um a secondary angle guide because i can feel that i'm going nice and straight and that i'm not rocking up and down but that is a great way to get 
a, a nice flat edge angle because you're just moving your body straight back and forward. And you can go back and forth, but it might be easier for you in this, in this case to just lift up and set back down. And then for pushing, I'm gonna do kind of the same thing. Uh, um, I'll, I'll use my thumb as an, as an angle um, finder and then just lean forward, pick it up. And I'm basically just lifting my elbows up and back down, but I'm locking my wrist. So I'm coming off the stone all the way to the tip, bring it up, bring it back, up, bring it back. But I'm dropping it straight down back to that same angle because my wrist and my arms are basically locked. You know, I'm basically just using, like lifting my elbows and my shoulder a little bit, but I'm leaning in and out, right? So you can use your arms. I mean, I do a lot, but when you're doing, when you're a beginner, um, it's a lot easier just to move your body with some blade shapes. Now, after sharpening it, the, 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 the process went very fast because it's so thin behind the edge, it just it sharpens up incredibly quick. You know, it, you could sharpen this thing up so fast out in the field or anywhere you're at, you know, just because of that thin geometry. I talk about it all the time, the thinner the geometry, the, the faster everything's gonna go. When stropping a blade shape like this, you wanna be careful because it's really easy to stab into the leather when you go into it. So what you wanna do is you wanna get the tip down around the angle that you want and drag it downward a little bit, just like that. Just drag it kind of downward, almost like a, a J. And then that will get you to a position where you're stropping the tip, but you're not stabbing into the leather. And then you can focus on here to the heel. So, and drag it straight up. But if you just go like that and straight up, see how it scratches my, my, my strop. So start with the tip, do a half J or a reverse J. Same thing in the pass. Now, you know, the deburring, the burr snapped right off. No problems with that. So the, the, the edge came out really nice. I did notice that this seemed like it wanted to take a little bit of a finer edge than some of my other S90V, which is not a bad thing. You know, that maybe even is a great thing, but it did take, you know, a, a very toothy edge. And then I just noticed that like, as I refined it a little, just a little bit more, it wound up getting screaming sharp. And, you know, I'm very, very happy with the way the results came out. Very, very happy. Now, as far as the action goes, because this action is absolutely insane, you have this fuller with the reverse flick. And I said in the first video, most of the things that I had that were negatives, I still stand by. But as far as the detent, you know, I, I still think, you know, it's a little bit on the lighter side, but I've also grown to appreciate it. It's so damn fidgety that I just, I freaking love it. And you have this front flipper. And I think if the detail was any stronger, I wouldn't appreciate the front flipper as much. Um, I did say in the first one that I wish these corners were knocked down and I still do wish that, but the front flipper works super duper good. It is an effortless front flipper. You know, it's just when you do the side finger, that's when you really feel you know, those corners and stuff and the jimping, but the jimping is really good for the reach over and for the thumb flick. And you know, like I said, you can do the side finger. So the action with the front flipper is, is incredible. It's really, really good. The reverse flicks, absolutely insane. And because it's a bolster lock, you can easily do it left-handed as well. And mine did come with the pin. I don't know how I didn't see it fall out of the box. I even watched my video back. You guys didn't see it, but I did record the unboxing. And it does come with a little pin that if you want to take the clip off, you can put the pin there. In this case, mine's black. And so it basically puts a cap over the hole where the clip's going to come from if you want to carry it in a slip, if that's your thing. I like it on a clip. So I'm very, very happy with, you know, it just the way it is. Now, the drop, super smooth. Look at that. Look at how smooth this is. And this is a very, very, very light blade. So, you know, and being such a light blade, you know, this is incredibly smooth. Now, as far as 
you know, the, the, the design from this knife. Um, actually, you know what, let's pull up the guns, the, the slinger real quick, the gun slinger. The gun slinger was his uh, first bolster lock knife or first locking knife that, you know, was extremely, extremely popular. I, I suspect this is going to be even more popular. Now he does have, or there is, I should say, there is some vampire jacks still left and there are some little bro jack or sorry was it the big bro or little bro i think it's the little bro yeah the little bro there's some little bros left and the the knife so i will link these down in the description for you guys um just you know check the link out if you're interested in the slip joints this one came from the midnight jack or at least that's you know you can see the design is the exact same all the way around it's just basically a longer enlarged version of it and yeah i'm actually happy he made it a little bit longer i know lefty edc said he wished it was this size and you know i think if it was this size it would still be really good so i don't think it really matters but you know because again this these ergonomics are so damn good and the way you have so much control over this knife is just absolutely amazing now as far as the negatives go T8 hardware all the way around. The pivot, I believe, is T10, which I really, really do like. Um, and the fit finish tolerances are all, you know, exactly what you'd expect from Jack Wolf. If you've never experienced one, uh, 10 out of 10, you know, maybe 9 out of 10, but really, really good up there with, with the best of them. Now, as far as negatives go, I do have a couple nitpicks. So one, you know, I said it in the first video, I wish there was a little bit better lock bar access. Now, to be clear, it's still fine. It's so enjoyable. Like, it's nothing I would modify. You know, like, it's very comfortable. I'm just saying, if I designed it, if I did it, I would put a little bit more lock bar access. But I don't think anybody will have an issue with it. In fact, I pretty much know nobody will. Um, now, the next thing is, I do wish the, the front flipper was up a little bit taller, kind of like this one. Maybe even, you know, a little bit taller than that one. This one was up a little bit higher, and I think that that little bit does add a lot when it's a small front flipper. Now, like I said, or just knock down these corners, I think would have been, you know, perfect. Um, not a big deal, but, you know, it's just a little nitpick. Now, the next thing is the clip which is probably the the biggest thing. Not really though, I don't know. Anyways, the clip with my thick jeans, it goes all the way up to here and then it kind of stops. Now with regular jeans, it slides in just fine. So for 99.99% .99 of you guys, this is gonna fit in your pocket just fine. But for my extra thick jeans, which are um, which are the, the perfect jeans, that's what they're called. Um, they have super thick you know, lining in the pockets or just the pockets period. So it does get tight. Can I still carry it? Yes. Do I still carry it? Yes. So it's not that big of a deal, but it is, you know, a little bit tight. I wish it was up just a little bit higher. Um, and then the next thing and the last thing is right here. You can see I hit my stone. Now, I don't think you'll probably have that issue using a fixed angled system, but when doing freehand, you tend to come up and hit like, like say, picture my finger as the stone. When you go up, you, you tend to hit right there. So I kind of wish that this was just knocked off or rounded in some way, shape, or form, just where this corner wasn't so close to the edge. Not a big deal. You know, it is something I totally can avoid, you know, just by being patient. Um, but, you know, I'm very impatient. So, you know, and it doesn't really bother me that bad. You know, to me, I'm going to use it. I'm going to love it. So um, it's not that big of a deal, but it would have been cool if it was was moved back but all in all like i said the best jack wolf yet by far in my opinion i absolutely adore it um i think every version that they made is awesome the jigged pattern one is really cool the fat carbon fiber ones are cool all of them are really really cool this handle material it's cool like i do like it and i'm glad i do have it in the collection because i do want to collect them all like matchbox cars or like pokemon cards um i never collected pokemon cards so i don't really know about them but i know people do so you know i kind of want to collect all the colors like that and i'm happy i have this one in the collection but i do think for this particular model i probably would have you know liked you know some of the other colors and i'm thinking about even buying one of the other colors because you know i wouldn't mind having two of these in the knife collection uh but anyways 
I do not know how many there is. I have no idea. I do know the dealers are going to have them. Like I said, the Neve Knife Co. site is going to have them. And then I'll have other links down there available um, where they're available as well. So definitely use the links. And I do appreciate when you guys use my links. You guys know it benefits the channel. And yeah, um, so there you guys go. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.